Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Continuing from last week, we have some good news on the investment in research into aging and a surprising tweet from Professor Matt Cabling that calorie restriction appears to benefit only one third of the tested organisms, depending on their genetics. We also look at a paper on melatonin's ability to extend lifespan and resveratrol relieving the symptoms of arthritis. First, a disclaimer that in this newsletter, we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on aging research. Thank you so much for your support. Here is an association study between dietary melatonin and total and cause specific mortality in Japanese adults. It has been suggested that melatonin has health benefits. It is also present in many foods. So in this study, the authors estimated the melatonin intake and examined the association with all cause and cause specific mortality. The study included 13,355 men and 15,724 women aged 35 and over. They assessed the diets and the melatonin content for each of them. They then looked at the mortality in a 16 year follow up. A total of 5,439 people had died and melatonin intake was significantly associated with decreased risk of cardiovascular and non-cancer, non-cardiovascular mortality after controlling for covariates. So as they say, data suggests that there is a benefit in dietary melatonin with regards to mortality rates. So the next question would be, what foods are high in melatonin? It seems walnuts, almonds, bananas, oats, rice, and tart cherries are some of the key foods that are high in melatonin. So yet another reason to eat healthy nuts. Here is a tweet from Dr. Sinclair about a review paper on resveratrol and its effectiveness on arthritis in animal models. The paper concludes that resveratrol reduces swelling, tissue damage, and cartilage loss. Let's have a quick look at the paper. Here it is. The pharmacological assessment of resveratrol on preclinical model of rheumatoid arthritis through a systemic review and meta analysis. There have been several preclinical studies of resveratrol and arthritis, but experiments and outcomes were both diverse. So they did a systemic review to assess the efficacy of resveratrol on RA. What they found was RA causes swelling of pores, increases the polyarthritis score and the arthritis index. And that resveratrol improves all of these markers, as well as improving the tissue condition and cartilage loss. RA is also accompanied by increased oxidative stress due to the increase in malon dialdehyde and low superoxide dismutase. Resveratrol reduced MDA and increased SOD. RA increased the number of markers of inflammation, such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and interleukin-1. Meanwhile, resveratrol decreased all of these and increased interleukin-10, an anti-inflammatory cytokine. So their conclusion was that resveratrol could be a clinically effective therapy for RA. Great to see this positive review on the efficacy of resveratrol. If it reduces inflammation, hopefully this works in a wider circumstances and is not dependent on having arthritis. And now a look at some of the investment in the aging area. Brian Armstrong, founder of Coinbase, is trying to raise funds for Dr. Cabelin's dog aging project with rapamycin. He says they need another 2.5 million to get a statistically significant result. He has put some money in, but they are still short 200K. And Richard Hart, who is a, another crypto investor, jumped in to say that he would provide the last 200K. So it is looking good for Dr. Cabelin's trial. Also on crypto donations to longevity research, Vitalik Buterin, founder of Ethereum, donated 1,500 ETH, whose current value is about 5 million, to longevity impetus grants. Who are impetus grants? Their aim is to support bold longevity research in a fast and effective manner. 
This is from their webpage, where they say that they are offering grants up to 500k and the decision will be made within three weeks. They want to support projects which drive forward our understanding of aging. They also encourage both positive and negative results to be published. It is great to see investment going into an organization which is first and foremost focused on researching in aging and has such an open-minded view. Please spread the news out if you know anyone or any organization who would be interested in applying for a grant with them. For more details, please see their website. Here is a tweet from Professor Matt Cablin, which totally shocked me. Calorie restriction appears to shorten the lifespan in one third and increase the lifespan in one third, depending on the genetics of the organism, all the way up to mice. I thought CR was the gold standard for longevity and nearly always increased lifespan. There was some discussion on Twitter and Professor Cablin said that he was working on a review and provided links to some of the original articles. We will watch for his paper as it looks to be super interesting. This is Edith Murway Trainer, who is a powerlifter and a holder of the world record as the oldest female competitive powerlifter. She is 100 years old and can deadlift 165 pounds, which is about 75 kilos, and bench 65 pounds, or about 30 kilos. What is even more impressive is that she did not start lifting until she was 91. She has now competed in more than a dozen powerlifting competitions and shows no signs of slowing down. It really does show that it is never too late to get started and to achieve great things. Another quiz for this week. Who are these young people? This is young Dr. Brian Kennedy. And how about this one? Not too hard. This is Dr. Sinclair. And the last one. This one is not so easy. This is Dr. Matt Cabling. These came from a tweet by Dr. Sinclair from some of his old pictures.